And now, Freelance Heroism presents Dragon Heist. Hey everybody, and welcome to Freelance Heroism. My name is Deese. And I'm Rachel. And before we even get started, I just want to say a big thank you to all of our patrons out there, in particular those who donate at the producer tier. You guys help us make a better show for everyone. So big round of applause for you, Rachel. Yes. Would you like to let us know who they are? I would love to. So we want to say thank you to Chris Deeds, Chris Sones, Christopher Hildebrand, Breakmeister, Nate, Rebecca, Orient underscore Tiger, and Vox Vastora. Thank you so much, you guys. And Cthulhu, Lord of the Deep. <laughs> May his chaos reign over our mortal flesh vessels until we are nothing. All right. Was that too dark? Um, I mean, I didn't. I didn't think that was something you wanted to share with the uh the audience but i can i can leave that in what are they gonna do my boss is legit <laughs> my boss is legit mm-hmm. he's got squid face and he don't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> he lives in a lake, <laughs> a lake. or the ocean uh-huh. <laughs> yeah i got it on the ground floor when he was still living in lakes oh okay yeah all right so rachel Yes. And uh, forgive me, I know this is probably a leading question because we've talked about it before. <laughs> but what's the worst neighbor you ever had? <laughs> That's a completely random question that I just made up now right. here on the fly. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, that would be my current neighbor. Uh, they. <laughs> Sorry, that, that was funny. <clears throat> Okay, go ahead. The way, the way that you gasped and then you just started <laughs> like coughing. Sorry. Current neighbor, go ahead. Yeah, I have these neighbors. We live on like the same plot of land, so our houses are on like the same driveway, essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, and every single interaction I have with them has been bad. Like, I am especially this past year and a half like i just want to be by myself in my house i don't want to interact with anyone (laughs) i just want to be left alone and yet i am constantly forced to have to like deal with these people uh through a variety of ways um (laughs) i'm sorry i'm sorry i know i know the story so it's very (laughs) funny to me so the the start of it, I guess, was a couple years ago when they first moved in, uh, and they have a, they have a couple kids. One of them is a little girl, and um, she just started like trying to come into my house, like it's like like a breaking and entering. Yeah, like she like I didn't when they moved in, like I didn't introduce myself to them or anything. I just like saw them, you know, like in their yard and stuff we might wave to each other uh but like she would this little girl would like just walk over to my house and like turn the doorknobs testing (laughs) my doorknobs to see if they were unlocked and so like i went over and i opened the door because i thought i don't know maybe like her parents are hurt or something i'm like are you okay and she's like can i play with your kids and i'm like i don't have kids she's like can i play with your cats i'm like no fuck out of here (laughs) like go away and But she kept doing it. So finally, I, like, walked her back to her house. And, like, I knocked on the door. The mom came over. And I was like, hey, please talk to your kid and tell her it's not cool for her to try to come into my house. (laughs) And the mom was like, oh, okay. But then, like, the kid kept doing it. And so one of the last times, I walked the kid like back to her house and I talked to them and I was like please talk to your child about trying to come into my house like that's not cool stop it yeah I went back to my house and like two minutes later I heard a knock on my door and it was the little girl and she was like don't talk to my mom and she ran off and I was like what is happening right now uh, you know what I do see here I just want to the way that we're different in as people is that you went over there and were like could you please talk to your daughter to not come to my house that yeah. that's how you handled that uh-huh. i would take the kid drag them by their foot back to their mom <laughs> on the step and i'd be like i have assembled and deployed a series of bear traps <laughs> now i am warning you that on my property there are bear traps now if your kid gets caught in a bear trap 
this is on you. I have recorded this on my cell phone for future reference. <laughs> have a nice day. I, and then I, I found out. I found out much later that like this little girl was going to other neighbors' houses and like trying to go into their house. Was she casing the joint? Fuck other, that little girl. Like, Punch uh, in the head. Other neighbors were like going to the the parents. I mean, like, hey, your kid is like coming over by herself to my house and like trying to come in. Please talk to your child. And yeah, but they're not. So you have to take it up. <laughs> I'm telling you, bear traps. They'll work. That they was my. Work, they they work on bears. <laughs> That was my first interaction with this family. Um, and then they would do stuff like, like two days before trash pickup would happen, they would put probably like a dozen trash bags um, out on the curb, like not in the big box that we have for trash, but just like yeah. out. So then animals would get into them and then the trash would like blow into my yard and they would never pick it up. <sighs> and it was stuff like, fast food bags and dirty diapers and wipes and uh. stuff like that. Yeah, it was really gross. And then they had, for a while, they had a really aggressive dog. Uh, like this really big oh, yeah. pit bull mix that they would just let out of their house to run around. Um, and it was getting really, really aggressive with me. And it actually um, like bit a neighbor. And they oh. were never doing anything about it. And like, Again, I, I just... <laughs> that what is like i part of me is like fuck that dog fuck that kid bear traps right mm -hmm. but the other part of me is like who are these parents that they yeah. just let their kid walk to another person's house and try to enter the the house and who lets their dog just run around mm -hmm. like out in the open terrorizing neighbors it's like at some point we have to acknowledge there's a common thread here yeah and uh last summer uh i guess they were having some kind of like plumbing work done so they couldn't use their water hose yeah because um, their drains were filled up with their bullshit <laughs> sorry so they so they had like i don't know if they bought it specifically for this but they had like an extra long water hose and they walked down the hill to my house and hooked their water hose to my house and oh. then like ran it back up to their house and they were using it for like filling up kiddie pools and like oh my for, god like, fire and stuff like that and <sighs> Like, uh. it was killing my water pressure. And so, like, at one point, I went out, and, and they never asked me if it was cool. So, like, at one point, I went out, and I just, like, un unscrewed it, and I left it like that. And they came out 20 minutes later and screwed it back in. <laughs> I swear to God I beat the shit out of your neighbor. There's <laughs> zero chance. Like, look, after there's one or two, three, four, whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I always, in any interaction with a person, I give them two strikes, right? Because that's how mm -hmm. baseball works, and I'm comfortable as an American with baseball, right? Right, right. One strike, two strike, maybe there was a miscommunication, maybe you caught me on a bad day. Mm -hmm. On the third strike, you can straight up go fuck yourself, right? <laughs> like, if you come back to my house after I walk out and unplug the hose, and you replug it back in, you better be willing to go to combat, because we're going <laughs> to combat, right? I don't, I don't understand how you can lack, like so much self-awareness that, you that you're like, beat it into them. They're like, oh, someone unscrewed the water hose that's connected to this girl's house. I better walk down the hill and screw it back in. You know, I, you know what? <laughs> People always say all the time, they're like, violence is never the answer. <laughs> Sometimes it is. Sometimes it solved loads of problems in my life. Uh, People are like, violence is never the answer. <laughs> I'm like, well, sometimes the answer has been given a bunch of times and the person don't listen. So mm -hmm. then you hit him in the head with a rock. And then they start listening, you know? Right. Sometimes it's like, it's like you got to kick a VCR sometimes, you know? It's a, you don't know what's wrong with it, but sometimes just bopping it one good time, you know, the, the treads link up or the fucking, mm -hmm. the, the door kicks back a little bit. And you're like, oh, hey, look, it's working. Right? right. Like an old TV. Bop. Oh, look, shook something loose. There was um, all the time, like when we get packages delivered, the, the, the delivery people mix up our houses. And so well, even the package thing, I will is... like, I don't always bring their package to their house, but like anytime I get a package delivered, I have to basically research the tracking history all day. And if it says it was delivered and I can't find it, then I know that it was delivered to my neighbor's house and they'll never bring it <sighs> over. And like one time I went over there and I had gotten, um, I had ordered, uh, some like pet stuff from Chewy and mm -hmm. I guess they also do too. Uh, so they had opened my box of my pet stuff, and then when they realized it wasn't theirs, they just left it on their porch. 
Um, but then another oh my time, God. <laughs> another time, I had a package delivered that was just left on their porch all day. And um, when I went over there, their dog had gotten into it and like ripped the package open and they had just put everything back into the ripped package and then just left it on a table on top of their porch. Like never even brought it to my house and been like, I'm so sorry, my dog got into this. I would waterboard <laughs> your neighbors, I think. But this- I'm, uh, per- I'm like, I don't know how the hell you're so chill about this. One of my uh, other neighbors uh, who like the little girl was always pestering them. Um, she said because she lives like down the hill to them uh in a different way than i do um and apparently like all winter because my neighbors have a baby they've been taking all the dirty diapers and just like throwing them on the side of the house uh but now now that it's no longer freezing cold winter uh all the diapers are defrosting and so the smell is just like like the wind is just blowing it straight to like my other neighbor's house wait stop Mm-hmm. Because it's winter, they were just throwing diapers in the corner. I, gu- a... I guess what? so. I guess that's, I don't know why. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> know. Christ. Uh, but the newest thing that I've been Rachel, dealing... you're making me angry. <laughs> and so, like, and I don't want to deal with these people. But, like, I'm constantly forced to have to deal with them. Uh, but the newest thing is that their kid, the same one that was constantly trying to break into my house, uh, she was riding her bike down the hill... And s- yeah. swerved her co- her bike uh, towards my car and crashed her bike into my car uh, and left like this huge scratch along the door. And there's like a dent, I guess, where like her helmet hit <laughs> the door. And then like along the bottom where her wheel scratched it up. And um, I mean, I've been parking in the same spot since before they moved in. Uh, the kid had to turn towards my car because there's a bunch of trees so she couldn't have gone like straight down the hill towards my car she had to turn towards it Um, and so I'm trying to like get my car fixed and they're not answering my text messages anymore so uh, this is my newest thing with these people you're you're so chill (laughs) and I was just we were talking about it before that uh, that the the calmness with which you're approaching this situation is not characteristic to me. Right. It is not the type of thing that would even occur to me. <laughs> right? Uh-huh. There's, I just, I don't, you might have to make the decent move here. <laughs> right? I hate to be that guy. I hate to ever condone violence mm-hmm. as a solution or aggressive stance or loud curse words or, you know, or petty gestures um but hey they work sometimes and in this instance maybe that's your best bet mm-hmm. like i just yeah no way. there's like i don't know i'm gonna try to contact them again um if they still don't answer me then i'm gonna we have the same landlord so i'm gonna talk to my landlord um yeah. and just try to like, have you I considered my... <laughs> building a trench, like a moat? I've not, I've not considered yeah. that. Look, I'm, I'm just saying that there's, you are very, you're teetering on the edge of where I would have already kicked their door in and screamed at them, and then <laughs> had a fight with whoever was there. Uh huh. I, I think the diaper thing I hadn't heard about. Uh, That's so maybe gross. not. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like I hadn't realized it was something they did. It's that, uh, the southern neighbor, in the, in the path of it. Um, oh god of the poo fumes of the yeah of the winter's worth of of diapers oh man Mm -hmm. i just there's no way i'm just okay look we (laughs) got to get to the episode but i just i just want to tell you Uh that you are being you have the patience of a saint because (laughs) i would have long since lost my mind all right well let's let's go to this week's uh dragon heist episode i'll give you some tips on how to how to fuck with them after this is <laughs> after this is done all right okay to well, the episode all right this is dragon heist 15 totally tubular i love this episode it's my favorite one is it what is it about it's about tubes <laughs> tube 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 okay tube 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 <laughs> watch now watch now no
so all this mess on the floor, and he's talking about ghosts and things. Um, since this is a D&D game, let's roll some dice. I, I want to investigate and see if this is just a random happenstance or if there's something else going on here. If he had just said he knocked the bottle over, I wouldn't care, but he brings up ghosts and there's powder everywhere. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so, investigation. Let's see how bad this sucks. Oh, uh, it's a bottle on the floor and there's powder <laughs> everywhere. Awesome. All right. Well, somebody ought to get to cleaning this stuff up. So you guys hear footsteps upstairs. Where I just came from? Yep. Did you have someone over? Not that I'm aware of. Although I was pretty tired. I typically know <gasps> those kinds of things, though. Is it one of the uh, sisters? Cause they no! Are- hell No! <laughs> Just look, I'm no. not judging. It's fine. Um, if I hear footsteps upstairs, yeah, I was not with anyone, so um I I will make haste for the second floor. I'll go All with right. them. All right. So you get up there, the second floor, and how do you enter? Mm, I guess with jazz hands. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Uh, with fanfare. Um, uh, you know, because because I didn't have anybody up here that I was aware of, I'm not just going to go charging through. Uh, I'm probably going to see what I can, if I can see something or ascertain something just from outside the door first. So I don't know if that's a stealth or an investigation or what I'm trying you to do. Give me a stealth if you're trying to come up quietly. I like that better because that's the thing I'm actually trained in. All right. Uh, it's 18. It's not horrible. All right. Is Adri being as quiet as well? Let's find out. Or is she just. Doosh, 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 doosh. She's probably whining. Uh, that's a nat 20, so 24 on my stock. Wow, shit. Okay, so yeah, you guys are sneaking up the stairs. Well done. As you guys approach the door quietly, you do hear a couple more footsteps inside. So when you say we hear footsteps, is it one set of footsteps or is it like multiple feet? One. one. It's uh, one set. Okay. So just one person walking around. Mm-hmm. Are they clotting like heavy footsteps or are they dainty? In between. It, it, they're, it's not like a full armored somebody, but it's not like a child either. Okay. Uh, I'm going to but I don't see anything. We just hear. Yeah. Were you expecting any company? Did you tell anybody we were here? No. Mm, Zor didn't follow you? But you said you were here, you, 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 that uh, Zord was with you last night. Well, he stayed in the cab. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to um, draw one of my daggers and I'm going to slowly make my way inside. All right. As you go inside, you enter quietly and the footsteps stop. Hmm. And can I tell what part of the second floor they're coming from? Yes. Pulling up the map. They were coming from the den. So you guys are in the common room right now. Okay. The den would be to the Technically north of you. I'm going to try and position myself like around the wall to, or a corner to peek around into the den if I can. All right. Um, as you do, um, give me a perception. All right, so that's a 10. All right. You don't see anything from your angle in the den? Adri, you picking? Silence. You guys you hear an anything? echo. You hear an echo from the basement. Tubes out of my tubes. <laughs> it, echo, it echoes through the house. Tubes and muffins. Nom, 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 nom. Dude, if I knew muffins was going to motivate this guy this much, I would have fucking put muffins in the campaign sooner. <laughs> Man, absolutely any food that you gave me for free is going to get devoured. <laughs> I, uh, I whisper, Miss Adri, 
Yeah. You picking anything up? I don't see anything, but I definitely heard something. It stopped as soon as we came in. Are we sure it was on this floor? Well, it sounded like it was right above our head. You hear an echo from the basement. Tube B or not tube B? By the way, remind me to stab Kavir when we get back downstairs. Tuber man, tuber man, sucks the fluids and into cans. I'm going to cast... No, I don't think detect magic would help very much. Tooby dooby doo, would... where are you? David, would detect magic show me if there was someone invisible? Would I be able to see the magic that they'd use to cast that's invisibility? Qu- that's a good question. It's the school of magic. No, so, yes. I know, I know, it being a spell, but the spell it intentionally is forcing the subject invisible. So normally you would need like a a true sight spell or something to break it. I'm but certain. I guess if you would detect magic at a high enough level, you'd be able to break someone's invisibility spell with it. I'll look it up. Hold on. Now, that's a that's an interesting take on it. I never considered using detect magic to uh, show somebody invisible. Oh, okay. They they found a clever way around it. Because the creature is not visible, you cannot concentrate to see their aura, nor the auras of any magic items they have in their possession. You that cannot pinpoint an invisible creature or object's location with detect magic alone. Okay, okay. so detect magic has to target something then. You yeah. Have to, yeah, you have to observe. Okay, it it's not like there. an okay. area. Okay. No. And then, okay. Yeah, there's a, spe- there's a different spell that's C invisibility, so that's how they... Okay. Throw some powder, bro. I don't have any powder. Scrub. I got a whole bunch of ball bearings, though. If I throw them in the den, whatever's in there isn't going to be able to move. Not Unless without it giving floats. the weights. But, well, <laughs> oh, it has footsteps, though. It has footsteps. So, yeah, it would, it would have to walk. So, I'm thinking if I just toss some ball bearings in there, like my whole... <laughs> I'm going to toss my whole sack in. Um, <laughs> Tubes oh, and sacks my and God. And... <laughs> Let me tell you. Uh, we've got tubes, tubes we've got, so got sacks, sacks full of balls, balls. and we've hey. got fingered muffins. Everything's <laughs> coming together. How does Rain in a room sack first? That's right. But I'm just, but again, I mean, I'm really thinking if I throw in, you know, a bunch of ball bearings in there, whatever is in there can't move without potentially falling or at least giving away its position. I can maybe get the jump on it if I do. One of my favorite moments from the early freelance game is when that blue fucking super speeder was running oh down the hallway yes. and he's faster than me like an asshole he kept dashing past right so i just finally while he wasn't paying attention dropped some ball bearings and he just slid his ass right into the fucking door like <laughs> douche i gotta admit that was one of my more favorite moments this dm because i found something that was faster than Kavir, and i put it in the fucking thing just to fuck with him yeah how'd that go Oh, it was awesome until you fucking did the ball bearings. Fuck that guy. But, you know, for a minute there, it was hilarious because he was getting real frustrated. And his DM, you know, you love those moments with the parents. Like, Motherfucker. Yeah, how was that deck save, though, bruh? Oh, that was awesome. So, yeah, I guess I'm going to uh, I'm gonna get a handful, let's say about 200 or so. Oh, my know. God. That's a lot of hockey players, Nate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to get a handful. A handful. And uh, I'm going to toss them into the room, and then I'm going to wait to see what happens. All right. I'm looking up on a ruling on one thing quickly, and then you'll have your answer. I'm sure I'm going to die. (laughs) All right. You throw the ball bearings in the room, and as you do, another glass bottle falls to the floor, shatters on the floor around your ball bearings, and you guys don't see anything else in the room. Where was that glass bottle? It was in the den towards the chimney. Was it like on a shelf or something? A center of the room. Oh. And there's nothing else in the room now. Besides one fifth of my sack. Ah. Yep. <laughs> and all them hockey players. Yeah. <laughs> all, all I want to say is that if, if we got given a house that I was going to turn to a hospital and it's just going to break all of my medicine bottles, I'm going to be very upset. Like, if that's just a curse for the house, <laughs> is that bottles keep getting broken? <sighs> That'd be a bummer. We have a poltergeist. Somebody needs to wheel the TV out on the balcony, push it out the door. Um, 
they're here mm-hmm. for my tubes. <laughs> I guess I, I, I'm, I'm going to kind of, I'm just going to, well, I'm going to carefully step into uh, the den to make sure that I don't trip myself. Uh, and then I'm just going to, hello, anyone here? Come on out and show yourself now. We're friendly. We're not here to hurt you. We just weren't expecting company. And the balls on the floor, you see the words, be, um, the balls begin to move and they begin to spell out words. You see, um, hi. It says, fuck your bottles, bro. <laughs> it's the ghost of Corona beer. And he's mad. He's mad about the sales. Ugh. Well, th- there's something you don't see every day, Miss Adri. Um, you didn't do that by any chance, did you? No. Okay. Can it you- would appear. I. I, I <laughs> Uh, this is, uh, I, I am dumbfounded. I, I, hear, I would just <laughs> I hear an echo from downstairs. Born to be wild. <laughs> uh, I'm going to look around the room and say, can you show yourself? Another spot on the, on the floor, the balls begin to move and you see no. They begin to spell out again. I don't trust you we're not here to hurt you yeah we um we we come in peace uh do you do you have a name by any chance it spells out not yet that's not ominous in any way of course not. Uh, <clears throat> no, guys, his name is not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I can assure you, we 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 really are not here to do you any harm. Um, this uh, we uh, just recently took possession of this home. We we weren't aware that there was anyone else here. It spells back in sarcasm. It's funny you should use the word possession. <laughs> and Adrian's like, yeah, we live here. I mean, uh... She sprayed me with water in the face. <laughs> <laughs> it spells, got any sweet tubes? I just yeah, got, I got tubes in the face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> You walk is laughing pretty hard. It's not every day she goes around the corner and just hits me in the face with a spray bottle. <laughs> Two. Oh, but you hope that was water. <laughs> I hope so because it's what she sprayed her lizard with. That well, is, that, is that like a sex term? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you fucking kids and your fancy lingo. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you oh, do this weekend? Oh, I sprayed my lizard. My lizard. It's like, what does that mean? <laughs> she, she wet me down like she wets your lizard. Oh, my God. They call that the moistened gecko. <laughs> <laughs> it's an actual gecko. Uh, <laughs> Is that really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a uh, Dalmatian leopard gecko or something like that. What uh, the fuck? That's too many sure. words. Pick one. <laughs> That's a fine looking gecko. <laughs> Careful, it's going to try and sell you car insurance. <laughs> you can save 15% on your damage. With <laughs> 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 All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Just can't stop thinking about a redneck going, that's a fine looking gecko you got. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tubes and geckers, man. It's all this, this is what it is, dude. Oh, Tubes, sacks, and geckers. <laughs> Tubes. What kind of what kind of fun you like to have with that gecker? <laughs> we like fingered muffins and geckers in this house. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. It doesn't even make any sense. Oh god. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
when I people ask for this. <laughs> when people ask when the moment was that freelance heroism lost all fucking bearing, we can tell them it was somewhere between the tubes, the fingered muffins, and the geckos. geckos. Yep. Oh. oh. I needed that laugh so bad. Oh. Do you think the house is like the thing that you're communicating with? Do you think it's like the doorway's a mouth? That I open on. Um well, it doesn't have a name. It says not yet. That's a little different than it saying I don't remember. So I, I'm not. I'm not really sure what we're dealing with. Um, so uh, when we when we you know when we tell it that we're we're not a threat, how does it react? I mean, is it? Or, or I guess what would just be better for me to, to say is, well, what, what would we have to do for you to be able to trust us? Do I need to add some more ball bearings so I can smell it? <laughs> <laughs> it tries to begin to move the balls and it stops for a second. You can see it's actually pondering because every time it tries to form a word, it stops and they go back to where they were. I guess I'll it just... just puts dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Eventually, it spells out time. Time. All right. <clears throat> well, if time is what you need, then time is time is what we'll we'll give you. Um, if you could just do me one small favor, though, the broken bottles on the floor are a little dangerous for us. Sometimes I like to walk around barefoot, and that would just—I don't want to end up in the hospital downstairs if I don't have to. So. You see the bottle, all kind of all the broken pieces, kind of move slowly together to the one small pile. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Much obliged. This is fucking weird. Um. Well, I suppose we'll we'll wait for you to figure out what your name is, unless you're wanting us to give you a name. It's spelled out. No, I have one. All right. Well, when you're ready to share it with us, then. That'll it spells out names or power. Does that mean anything to me? Um, give me an arcana check. Can I oh make boy. an arcana check too? Sure. Please do, because that's <clears throat> not my forte. I like to consult the tube lord. <laughs> <laughs> the tube lord speaks in mysterious ways. 17. No, it's just hard to dictate what he says because it comes through echoey. Mm. Uh, 17. Um, you do remember Victor going off about during his time at the Blackstaff Academy that there was a, a uh, advanced course in magic about true name magic. About um, being able to control someone by knowing their name. Okay. I will explain this to Rain. Well, I, I assure you if we know your name, it's just be cordial. It's not to uh, influence you, uh, control you, uh, enslave you, or anything like that. But uh, just whenever you're ready, we're fine. My, I don't know. Now I'm sort of hesitant to share my name because I'm, I don't want this <laughs> creepy thing to like spell it out in ball bearings, and then all of a sudden I'm fucked. Um, no, I'll introduce myself. I'll, I'll let it know my name. I'll look at Adri and raise an eyebrow like, and you're going to do it too, young lady. Because I'm not going to be the only one that's screwed. <laughs> I will also introduce myself. It spells out one letter on the floor for you. L. Well, L for right now, that's, that's what I'll refer to you as. It is very, it's my pleasure. It moves all your ball bearings back to your feet in a pile. I will scoop them up and add them back to my bag. His I name will is lollipop. <laughs> I will refill my sack. <laughs> How many guys can do that after spreading it out? <laughs> Take <Jesus>. skill. <laughs> you gotta need a tube. <laughs> <laughs> I um. Oh hell. L the 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 one downstairs rooting around in your basement. Um, his name is uh, Kavir, and um. He might come off a little bit insensitive, but uh, trust me, he's he's on the up and up. You don't need to worry about him either. You, you don't hear anything, but um, there's no real disturbances or anything. Okay. All right. 
I just don't want to walk down and find Kavir with like tubes shoved in his eyeballs or something. <laughs> <laughs> lying dead over tubes in every orifice. <laughs> All Blood the better to see you with, yes. my dear. Blood stain on the wall. I don't trust the tube man. Um, oh. Tube man, come together <laughs> with your... Oh, sorry. Um, all right. So we've met L. There's I, a I lot guess happening in this episode. There's... There is. We haven't left this house <laughs> for the majority of it, and a lot is going on. Uh, it's the two-hour pilot. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> have to introduce all the characters. Uh, now I'll I'll go ahead and collect my things and take them downstairs um, right. and uh, see what uh, see what Professor Tube is up to. <laughs> all right. As you guys are beginning to head downstairs, down in the cellar this, during this time. What are you doing with the tubes and the? Do I have any tubes that fit the previous tubes? You can find some that work. Yes. I'm going to fasten some connectors. All right. I'm going to then place some buckets at the bottom of the tubes. Uh, for now, this is going to be my testing. Then I'm going to run back upstairs. <sighs> I'm going to affix some open, kind of like maybe funnelized tubes at the top. That'll be my way to get rid of bloody gunk and materials that I don't want to have on hand. So like when I have to throw away a kidney or something. All right. Yeah. I'll just toss it in there and it goes down into the bucket downstairs. I call that the fuck it bucket. <laughs> <laughs> this is broken. Fuck it. Put it in the fuck it bucket. Uh, uh, but yeah, until I can get some more elaborate machinery in here, uh, that'll work pretty good. Have the tables arrived yet, David? Um, no, not yet. They are coming though. Ugh. Amazon, am I right? Yeah. What can I say? These shipping's delayed. They're not essential. What about Alicia? Is she <laughs> supposed to be here today? Yes. It's still about like seven, eight ish in the morning. She knows what time she was supposed to get here. Early. You in the talk pad on the floor that has yet to be swept up. As you're walking around, eventually you notice there's a high in it. A high? Yeah. What kind of powder did I spill? Or the whatever this powder. This is high powder. <laughs> hey, it, no, on. just H-I is just in the powder. I'm going to look at it for like a really long time. And then it spells your name underneath it. Come here. Hello? The powder moves and kind of erases itself. Okay, I'm going to take a step back, look around. Uh, investigation check. Okay, roll for it. <laughs> all you nine. notice is the powder <laughs> right on you don't even hear the uh, stairs as uh, Rain and they Adrian go around. On the, yeah There's they're no coming connection. down the outside of the stairs and <laughs> you're, you're just sitting there focused on this powder that moved and eventually they go around downstairs and around back in and as you guys are walking in you see Alicia standing at the front door uh, morning morning is, is is the doctor ready he's been awake for a while already yeah okay i did i didn't know it was if it's rude for a young lady to yeah um this early can i hear young. them talking out there i don't know does your one on your investigation like, i was investigating <laughs> powder i could still hear things <laughs> yes you can hear them outside all right uh come in the three of you walk in i'm assuming mm-hmm. all right doctor we're not nobles oh. you just come in Right, Doc? Right. Well, I was going to have you sweep this up, but now I'm having sort of a moment. So uh, just sit over there for a minute, and I'll be right with you. Okay, you two. I think there's a ghost in this house. I'm pretty certain of it at this point. Yeah, L? Uh, mm-hmm. L? L. Like what, L Ghosto? There's a fucking no. ghost no, in the house. The letter, the letter L is all it's given us for their name. He seems to be a little hesitant to share his name because he doesn't quite trust us yet. Or she. I'm not sure. I'm not going to assume the gender of our ghost just yet. What about Eleanor, huh? Yeah, think about that. Yeah. Um, okay. What does it want? Uh, it it's want? A, it... <laughs> El hadn't made its intentions clear yet. It just uh, said it didn't trust us, but uh, it needed time in order to do so. So I suppose we have ourselves a fourth roommate. 
It is a ghost. Yes, that much is certain. Are, are we certain? It's a ghost? No, out, out of character. Oh. Do we know it's a ghost? Could it be a demon? Uh, well, I mean, it's it's invisible and it's doing all the things it could be that a I genie. would. Genie. It's very bottle centric. Hmm. Hmm. Mm, that's, that's a, a good fl- point. That's a that's flavorful a, thought. That is a, a yeah. Mm, delicious. <laughs> mm. Yeah. That's a yummy. Hmm. I'll Could be. Never tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we're going to find out one way or the other. Um, uh, okay. Well, quit breaking things, if you don't I, mind. I, I asked if it would kindly not break bottles for we we didn't want to get hurt or anything. So, well, it agreed. Are expensive. They cost money. True. I, um, are they are they expensive though? I mean, they're they bottles. are. They're bottles. I mean, it's not nice to break them, but I'm just saying they're not. Maybe you're right. It's just they're, they're not, not expensive. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's what it is. Adri, Adri hears him say bottles are expensive. She's like, are they? Everything's yeah. expensive to someone there, Miss Adri. Just keep that in mind. All I'm saying yeah. is that when, the, when the you're out of freedom, <laughs> when the bottles are broken and the potion that was in them is no longer going to save your life, remember how expensive they are. <laughs> it's going to cost you your entire life. No, uh, we we asked it, and it was nice enough to clean up its own mess. So, what about a chalkboard? Can we get a chalkboard? Well, it seems to be able to communicate just about anything. I I threw a bunch of ball bearings on the floor, and it was able to spell things out in that. So, right, but wouldn't it be more convenient to have a chalkboard as opposed? Agreed. To things yeah. on the floor? I, I think it can. Well, I don't know if it's actually well. Hey, L, can you use a chalkboard? Question. Yeah. In the ground, you, it spells out. What's that? Uh, like a sideways floor. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna take a piece of charcoal out of my out of my um pack, and I'm gonna walk over to the wall, and I'm gonna put a piece of paper, like put it on the wall, and I'm like, can you use this? And I'm gonna show it. I'm gonna make marks on the wall. Like, can you use that? And I'm gonna set it down. It picks up the chalk and makes marks on the wall. Excellent. This is our new communication method. When you want to talk to us. Alicia screams and runs outside for a minute. I'm gonna grab her. (laughs) Okay. That that I at um little kid. That's that's unholy. Little kid. Yes. We're gonna do some weird shit in this house. You better get it together. (laughs) I I uh um yeah I okay. Look, I'm the doctor. You're my companion. Get it together. All right? Okay. All right. Now, here. Carry this basket of tubes. (laughs) Doc? Yeah. (laughs) And you will be Marty. (laughs) (laughs) No, so, um, uh, yeah, I'm just going to be like, okay, so from now on, what we'll do, and I'm going to... What's the wallpaper situation looking like? Um, some has it, some doesn't. It's it's hasn't been really fully kept up yet. Light colored, dark colored. It's lighter. It's it's um. What's left of it's lighter. Some of it's stained. Most of it. I mean, it was a lighter color. I mean, it was it was tavern. So it's either wood paneling or wood or the uh like a beige stained. Yeah, like drywall. a dry a drywall kind of situation. They used um, paper to go over the wood and painted it back in the day. So there's probably, like, I could probably punch through a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to tap my finger along until I find a place where it's next to a stud, like a elongated long ways All right. uh, rail. I'm going to punch my hand through it. Into the stud? Into above the stud. So it's okay. like uh, long ways. I punch a hole over top. All right. Give me a check check. Break his head. I mean, oh fuck! <laughs> you Adrian the wall. Not funny. <laughs> okay, and I'm I mean, we're talking. A... Yeah. Yeah. If if it was a 19, maybe I would have gone to the other end, but a 20 is perfect. So it's just as far as I wanted, right? I'm gonna take a handful of chalk and I'm gonna put it on top of the plank there in the wall, and be like, okay, when you wanna get our attention, write something on the wall. Deal. Yes, gets spelled out. From this side to this side. And every day, Alicia will clear off the board. Deal? He's just like, what a what? <laughs> yeah, you're going to clean off the ghost wall. 
They said there'd be days like this in the apprenticeship. <laughs> oh, it's going to get so much fucking weirder. Wait till we have to staple someone's head back on. <laughs> That's going to be crazy shit. Oh, boy. Okay. Alicia, uh, if you wouldn't mind scrubbing off the little bit of text on the wall. She walks over. Is he going to get offended if I take its words off the wall? No, no. It'll be fine. It's not going to follow me home, is it? I mean, if you don't do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> her eyes just go I, white again <laughs> I kind of stomp my foot on the floor when I hear him say that <clears throat> shoot him a look <laughs> like these fucking kids they need motivation she, she she wipes it off the wall real good just kind okay. of walk by and grit my teeth motivation's fine don't scare the shit out of them tables are going to be here shortly in order to put those down I need you to sweep up that stuff over there don't make me have to get the ghost on you alright guys where were we well, I was asleep, but mm-hmm. I guess I got a blank slate. Uh, I guess we're waiting on your furniture. And then I suppose we're going to have to get ready for this damn dinner party. Right. Alicia, what are you doing for dinner? Um, Whatever's being cooked at home. Would you like to attend a dinner party with us? That'd be nice. Okay, fantastic. You can take my place if you'd like. No, they definitely need you there. <laughs> Who's the dinner party with? Some Janasi folk up the way. I oh. would tell you their names, but... Avi I, and I, Embrek. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, I'd remember their names, uh, but I just don't care enough, <laughs> really. Okay, the ones that run the steam and steel. Yeah. Oh, they're nice folks. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go home and get changed because I'm still wearing my dress from last night. So I'll be back later. She leans over to your. I wasn't going to say anything about her dress. <laughs> oh, no. Go ahead. By all means. <laughs> say something about her gross dress. It's a nice dress. It does have a bunch of mud caked around the frills of it, to be honest. But to it, it was a lovely walk through dress. This neighborhood. Mm. I'm going to oh, go get my, my pillow, my blanket, oh, and I'm going to no, go you, hail a taxi. It doesn't take long for the, um, you to hail the taxi. As you do, the tables begin to arrive one by one, being carried over. Fantastic. As you're inside, Alicia leads over. You know, the neighbors aren't going to think many proper for coming over that late at night to see you. Say again? J- just letting you know, that the neighbors may not take it very well that she comes over that late at night to see you. I'm God. I'm trying to say this with a straight face. Oh yeah, no, no, but but don't 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 be weird about it. This was just this time. She normally looks much more clean and normal. <laughs> she was just gross from the night before. So she's used to coming over here to see you late at night. She lives here. Oh, understood. Right. She's one of my servants. One of my many, many servants that I have. That <laughs> she's really over at Rain. Looks back yeah. at you. I'm gonna be like he. We, we let him think he's not, but he is. I'm sorry. This is a very Kavir moment. Let me go back to the professional. <laughs> uh, she uh, works on the second floor. That's she's she does uh, engineering and mechanical things, sort of like we do, except we do it in the body. The body is essentially a machine. Full of tubes. It's tubes and sphincters, man. A series of tubes. (laughs) The internet is not trucks. (laughs) The internet is tubes. Does everyone remember that? Yes. Can we take a minute to to remember (sighs) that old fuck in Congress who thought (sighs) that people were clogging up the internet by downloading whole books? He said that shit on camera. Oh God. Okay, just wanted to re- let's never let that guy stop being remembered for saying yes. that shit. That guy needs to be next to Abraham Lincoln in the history books. It'll be like, this is what a successful person looks like. This is that dumbass who thinks the internet's made of tubes. <laughs> Somebody downloaded Moby Dick. I couldn't get on the internet. Last night. <laughs> oh. Sir Moby Dick was well. Actually, could have been Moby Dick. They were downloading <laughs> all that bad with. <laughs> so uh, I'm not your Moby Dick, Alicia. We got to get you a uniform. If you're going to work here, you're going to be a doctor, correct? 
I'm hoping to be. Okay. Perfect. People need doctors, no matter how rich, no matter how famous, no matter how powerful you are, everybody gets close to the end and they need a doctor. You remember that. We are the most valuable people ever. Mother says the real expensive doctors mm. get called in the, in the dark of night to the nobles' houses to take care of things that nobody can see. Yep. But the problem with doctors that are elitist is that they apply their trade only to those who can reward them in financial gains, right? They, they, they apply their trade only to those who pay. But as doctors, we help everyone. You hear me? Your worst so, enemy comes in here on the verge of death. As long as they're not a threat, you help them. All right. It's a little tricky ethically for uh, a kid, but I think that you'll get it. I'll try to lead by example. So we help everyone no matter who they are. No matter who they are. All with right. With their health. Not with other aims or other... Does, does, it, does that include ghosts? Same with ghosts. I don't know how we would help them with uh, their health, but if there's a way that we can relieve pain, that's what we do. Okay. She just kind of looks around, like, sheepishly for a minute. I'll I'll start sweeping. Right on. Adri. Oh, she left. (laughs) Just look around. (laughs) Yeah, she has has left. Okay. So, Adri's on the wagon back to her house. Um... She was off the wagon last night. Oh, right. uh, quite right. A whole lot quieter than the night before. You get home as your brothers and his friends are all leaving to head off to the tower. Bye. They're like, scavenger hunt was amazing. What is a tower but just a really fancy tube? <laughs> <laughs> a tube in which people live. Which was like, don't worry, they didn't take any of your stuff. They should not have gone through my stuff. Hello. None of them have ever been in a girl's room before. They you better... think I couldn't make money off that? What? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Check all your drawers. <laughs> wow. I was not going there, but okay. <laughs> that's what happened. If a little kid is in a, in a girl's room, that's oh what God. he was doing. He was going through her stuff. <laughs> so he's like, so he's just like, you want half the gold? If I find anything out of place, I'm going to go through. In fact, have fun at school today. I'm going through your room. And I'm going to shove it. him out the door. Ah! I'm going to go through your stuff like liquid. Off to the black stuff. <laughs> He's like, mark my words. I'm going to be better than the guy I've been under I shut the door. I shut the door while he's talking. Gas expel. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Victor, you hear from down the street. <laughs> oh, you know what? Rachel, remind me to, to hire your brother. No. Okay, I'll remember. Okay. I need some of those teleportation pads. <laughs> Seriously. He, he's on his way. Did you walk through the living room? Ludo's just sitting there, stringing away. Long night, huh? Good morning. Good morning. You know your mother wouldn't approve of you staying out that late, right? No, she definitely would not have. No, she, dude, she'd have a conniption fit. Mm-hmm. I don't know where you were, but she would have dragged you back. I, I came home, but like Victor and his friends wouldn't let me sleep. So. Oh, I know. You mean meditate, I, I, right? Because elves I, I, don't sleep. Elves don't I, sleep. We meditate. don't ever sleep. We meditate. Oh. Rah, 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 rah. I silenced earlier. You came home. That's silenced again. Once you woke them all up, they were just asleep too. I really didn't care that you came home that late. I was more upset that they were all waking up. Those <laughs> <laughs> little bastards had just gone to sleep. You know well, how many times I cast sleeping on them last night? <laughs> that doesn't sound legal. Damn glad they have so few hit points. <laughs> <laughs> First off, your mother was the paladin, not me. Second off, what have I ever done the legal route? <laughs> That's fair. He's just back in place. Hey, do you know like a like a piratey kind of dude? Adri? He said he knew you and mom. Who are we talking? Uh, this guy I met at a party last night. Yeah, you're making the hair stand on the back of my neck now. What are we talking about, daughter? Uh, 
What's his name? Captain Zord. He stops playing. He said he knew uh, you and mom. He's back in town, you say? Yeah, like, he was at the party last night. How long has he been in town? I don't know. Is he with one or three ships? Uh, he's with the Maiden's Fair. Uh, okay. Three ships. He pulls out a small book on the back of his fiddle and takes a couple of notes and slips it back there. So how did your mama know him? Your mom, he, he, made a, he made a mad pass at your mom back in the day. We got into it. It got kind of huffy, you know, bravo to bravo. Luckily, I'm an elf. He's a human. Whatever would have happened would have been short-lived. Doesn't hurt. I'm a better swordsman than he is. But um, <laughs> I'm going to let you... is that he has crossed swords with that man. <laughs> so I'm going to let you hang out, and I'm going to call some, go see some of my friends later. Okay. Stay out of trouble. You said the... Uh, how many days did you say he was in town? I don't know how long he's in town. I saw him last night at the party, and then later uh, when I took a cab, to uh, alone uh, my other pl- yeah understood okay he gives you a quick bow and just exit qu- quicker than he normally does all right God, dads are so weird i'm gonna go <laughs> to my room i don't want you to see him again and as he leaves the door <laughs> I, I, I didn't see him in the cab on purpose he was just there he's always just there Shh, door yeah so adri's half pirate <laughs> and her dad's jelly about it so then he went out to go see how many ships he had mm. because on the other ships are where his other daughters live. <laughs> or sisters, or half-sisters, half-pirate sisters. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, one of them is actually half-parrot. That was a weird <laughs> party. <laughs> <laughs> he made her parrot talk. <laughs> uh, <sighs> All right. All Papa right. parrot, that's what they call him. <laughs> All right. So, so I'm going to get cleaned up and uh, I'm going to take one of the nicer bottles of wine that I assume we have in our wine cellar or whatever. Oh, yeah. See how AJ's going a different route? In the northern wine cellar, not the not the southern wine cellar. Oh yeah. Um, right. The special <laughs> wine that your father keeps just for himself. Yes. Yeah. That, um, that wine that costs more than the person's house that we're going to dinner. <laughs> yes. That that won't be offensive at all. Nice work. Just taking a just a night just a nice bottle. I brought salt, bread, and wine. Uh-huh. Rachel's going to bring a 20,000 gold <laughs> bottle of wine, buy them a bakery, and get them a salt <laughs> mine. No, she's just getting a nice bottle of wine. I'd imagine she'd just bring everybody a pony because that's what she <laughs> assumes currency is. Right. How many? How many? How many? Uh... I always get one of these for my birthday and for special occasions and on Sundays. Right. The pony day. Everyone knows pony yeah, day. Yeah, pony, pony day. day. Right. What, right. Else would she... what else would you do on Sunday? Well, she's <laughs> hunting for a bodacious wine bottle. What is Rain doing? Bodacious? Is that the... <sighs> you know why you're the best DM, d Why? Because you say bodacious, bodacious. in terms of wine. <laughs> when, you try to, when you try to think about how you want to, to describe wine to somebody, you're like, you know what? It's bodacious wine. <laughs> I oh. Pepsi challenge any other DM to describe wine as bodacious. You can find me a clip of someone saying this is some bodacious wine. Somewhere right know. now, there there's a sommelier in France whose hair on the back of his neck just stood up. Magnifique. <laughs> someone, someone just referred to a wine as bodacious. Well, it could be. I must alert bodies. the others. What if it was a full-bodied wine? It is a bodacious wine. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I mean... Wow. I, oh, wow, God. David over here innovating. Oh. Changing the wine game. Oh. Yeah. Remember, though, it's only a bodacious wine if it comes from the bodacious region of California. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, it's sparkling, <laughs> otherwise, it's sparkling white wine. Yeah. I uh, hate the, that <laughs> shit. I hate when people do that. <laughs> Oh my god. <sighs> is it from Bodacia? Uh, Bodacia. It's not Bodacious. No. It's just a tiny little sliver up the I-5. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I have to use the restroom so bad that if I don't, I'll die. So okay. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. All right.
oh, I guess in the meantime, we'll figure out what Rain's doing. All right. Uh, so how much time do we have actually before the dinner starts? You got it's morning. Dinner's about probably five or six ish in the evening. You guys have a good twelve hours. Okay, so I've got hours, plenty. So. Okay, I got plenty of time to um, get back to the skewered dragon. Get a yep. get a change of clothes. Get cleaned up. Check my messages. That sort of thing. Um, yeah, that's what I do. And I'll probably. Well, how, how far of a walk is it from the north ward to the docks? That's a pretty. That's a pretty good haul, isn't it? Yeah. Um. It's because. Yeah, because um, actually, uh, yeah, yeah, because the north ward's up here. Yeah, Sorry. and the dock ward's down. Yep. Yeah, dock I'm ward's down here. there. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I imagine I'm not going to hoof that all the way. That's going to take a couple. Well, it'll probably take about an hour or so, maybe a little longer. So, yeah, um, I will. Um, I'll, I'll uh, get the services of a of a carriage to uh, take me back to the skewer dragon. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, um, you, you know, you head down there. You, you know, you get your change of clothes. You get your shower. You check your messages. You see a couple, um, couple of new leads. Black Network has done some moves. The, uh, you know, the bartender sent you some stuff. Okay. Saying that they're capitalizing on the, or they're, they're actually able to, they were actually able to capitalize and take some a number of streets after the incident the other night. Where the uh, you guys jacked up and jacked up the half orc and the mage and whatnot and got you know right near back. So the black network was able to expand its territory because of what we did. Um yes, because okay. um Xanathers it damaged Xanathers region a little more. Mm. So the black network immediately capitalized on the fact that one of their hires <laughs> higher ups was removed. Now, now when you say that, is it? Is it in terms of something happened and Xanathar lost some cred and the Black Network was able to spread? Or was it, we heard what you guys did. I mean, are we, do we not have a target painted on us because of? No, you guys don't have a target painted on you. They just took advantage of the situation that you guys, okay. you guys left a vacuum of power when you dropped the one guy. Okay. And the area he controlled fell into somewhat chaos and they were able to move in on that chaos. Gotcha, but it's it's not like we're getting credit for no, no, for no. doing so. Okay, yeah, just yeah. yeah. No, the Zan- Zan- the Xanathers aren't targeting you guys because you guys crippled a part of their network. Mm. No. Okay. Good. So, um, um, okay. No, all right. I'll I'll take that uh, I'll take that news to heart. Um, you did also get a note from one of the guards saying that uh, um, they are still holding the prisoner for you guys. Yeah, I was just—I was actually thinking about that. So, uh, they're not going to be able to hold him for too much longer either. Uh, I'm gonna—I'm gonna send a message back to um, what's his name, Captain. Okay, uh, let me pull up my list. I have it right here. Anders, Sergeant. Anders. Anders. Yep, Sergeant. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I will send a note, uh, Sergeant Anders' way, telling him uh, that uh, we still appreciate him holding on uh, to the prisoner, and that uh, I'm going to make it a point to uh, get Kavir and Adrian myself up there. Uh, you know what? Let's let's pencil that in for tomorrow. All right. The sooner the better. That way, they're not. Uh, I'm not. We're not making any more of an imposition against them than we already have. Uh, yeah, and then all early yeah. morning tomorrow. Right. Finish after early, early after sh- after brunch. Six thirty no. in the morning. <laughs> no. After a long four hour run. Hmm. I, I let Sergeant um, Anders know we'll be there at eleven AM. All right. <laughs> Which is the six AM of Waterdeep. <laughs> <laughs> so all right. It's always good to get somewhere two hours early, just FYI. Mm. Okay. Yep, so I'll set that up. Get myself, um, get myself as dressed up as I can stomach, given the fact that I'm going to have to have dinner with other people. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get dressed up, and and um, I will go ahead and uh, flag a carriage back down and head back to the manor. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, as he's doing that, what are you doing, Kavir, during this time? Your tables have been delivered 
All uh, six. I'm going to arrange them. All right. Um, what side of are there windows in the first floor? Yes. Okay. Where are the windows? Like from the front entrance when you first walk in, uh, off to the right and to the back is where the stairs that go down to the basement are, right? Uh, yes. Okay. And then on the left side of the doorway is the arrangement of tubes, correct? Down in the basement? No, no. On the first floor. When you first walk in off to the left is where the bar used to be, correct? Um, yeah, we're straight ahead and just a little bit off to the left is, yeah, the bar and behind that's the hatch to the basement. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to remember it from how I visualized it. Off on the left, what's that big rectangular thing? Or that weird tooth-shaped black spot? When you first walk in, one, two, three squares. Chimney, over, I believe. Left. Chimney? Yeah, that's a fireplace. Yeah. How big is the kitchen? One square is five feet. That's, 10 feet. that's not very much room. All right, I'm going to put the, the, the beds over where it says first floor, between first floor and pantry. All right. The bar is not there, correct? It's gone. If you tore it out. Yeah, I'll tear it out. Uh, right. So then every five feet, so one, two, three will be right. I'm going to put the three in that space in between so that there's about three to four feet of space in between the tables. Uh, and then five feet between, okay, so one, two, right, tables with like three feet in between. So you can like reach back and grab something on the table behind you. And then five feet in between, and then repeat, repeat. So they're in like sets of two tables sort of next to each other. All right. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to start assembling simple uh, materials to put on each table next to the bed. Uh, and then maybe a blanket or a sheet or something over the other table. So it's like a hospital bed, and then directly next to it, uh, a few tinctures and mortar, pestle, uh, sharpened sticks and knives and stuff like that. Surgical tools. Sounds good. Sounds good. And a tube on every table. That's a that's a that's a motto that we have here at Kavir's Chop Shop. Tube on every table. Tube in every butt. Right on. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. As we prep for a dinner party, that's what I'll be doing. All right. Setting up the chop shop dining room. Now, uh, Miss Adri, before you leave your estate, uh -huh. I believe you wanted to visit your little brother's room. I did. Um, so does Victor have anything like a, does he have like a piggy bank? Uh, investigation. Okay. This kid's magical. He's so. 17. He does. It's locked behind a um, magically locked box. Okay, but you can put coins into it? Um, I you'd so actually have like to a... open it up to put stuff into it. There's not he like a slot has a... for coins? No, he doesn't have one of those. It's more of a, like a kind of a box that's locked. Okay. And then he has a magical lock on it. Okay. Um... You can spray Axe body spray on his pillow so that when he sleeps on it, his arm smells. Uh, what I'm actually going to do then is I will take just one of my coins then, uh, and I'm going to use my magical tinkering ability on it. The object continuously emits your choice of an odor or a nonverbal sound. The chosen phenomenon is perceivable up to 10 feet away. I'm going to make it smell like farts, uh, and then I'm going to just like hide it God. in his room. Uh, this oh, is... Uh, well this called, mate. This lasts indefinitely. <laughs> I knew it. I knew. I knew it was going to be something like that. We've turned her to the dark side. Uh, this is this lasts indefinitely. Ooh, Basically, until point. until I make it end, then it All right. just and I'm just going to hide it somewhere in his room. Instead of a penny, it's a poo penny. <laughs> oh man, that's gross. All right. Uh, I know and, you collected coins. <laughs> uh. Uh, if it was a Canadian coin, it would be a poonie. <laughs> uh, and then it's a quarter get... pound. <laughs> uh, and it's only from up to 10 feet away. So if he moves 15 feet away from it, like if someone's standing outside of his room or just out of range of it, they don't smell anything. Oh, so it's right. just, just when you're within 10 feet. So it's a okay. focused poop bomb. Yes. 
That's gross. Okay, I need a stealth check on how well you hide it. Okay. 15. All right. I mean, I assume he'll eventually find it, but it is going to be really annoying. And even if he, like, hides it somewhere in my room, I'll just end the the effect. All right. What if he just poops in your room? (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes the old tricks are the best, you know? Sometimes you don't need magic. Sometimes your butt will do fine. Oh, man. What was that? Dude, what was that fucked up movie? Um... Any significantly advanced turd seems like magic. <laughs> was it nine months? It was the dude on uh, the movie where uh, um, all the, the guy, all his buddies in the house gave each other pink eye for fucking with each other's pillows. Oh, oh no. yeah, no, that's uh, uh, knocked up. Yeah, knocked up. Yeah, Seth Rogen. I was I couldn't get Seth Rogen's name out of my head for a second. Yeah, Seth Rogen. Um, him and the girls showed up to the house, and everyone was like, "Oh, you got you can't come in pink eye. Why? Go I, I I thought it was him, and then I farted on his pillow, and I farted on and they all fucked with each other's pillows and shit and gave each other pink guy. Have you not seen that movie, Rachel? No. It was fantastic. Oh, Lord, that's an awesome movie. <sighs> uh, after I do that, I'm going to get a nice bottle of wine. Uh, I'm going to get some of my, like, extra tinkering tools and stuff like that so I can take to Troll Skull so I can start setting up a workshop there. Uh, then I'm going to get an Uber to take me back to Troll Skull. All right. Yeah. Retroactively, uh, I probably would have gone ahead and started making arrangements to have some of my things move from uh, the Skewer Dragon from my office up to uh, Troll Scrolls. Well, there is blackmail materials. And... Are you, you're bringing the, the anchor as well? <laughs> to be determined. Is Lindsey Graham summoning doll? <laughs> to be determined. I, um... it's, just Her- it's just Herbie the Elf from. Uh, <laughs> from uh, Uh. thanks for listening to freelance heroism plays dragon heist Uh, if you would like to support us please check out our patreon we're at patreon.com slash freelance underscore heroism Uh, we have different things there character journals art bloopers stuff like that our cast includes me as Dr. Kavir the Raven, Rachel as Adri the Highborn Artificer, Nate as Rain Triche, Dockside Officiant, and of course, Dwok as Dr. Midnight and everybody else in the game. Thanks for listening to Freelance Heroism Plays Dragon Heist. And uh, we don't invoice in this group. We'll be back next week with more episodes, so stay tuned. So you get to play your Resident Evil today, right? Yeah, uh, later tonight. When it's dark, uh, they're, they're do- yeah. When it's dark, <laughs> uh, they're doing a um another like you can access the demo within this eight hour block, but you can play for like sixty minutes instead of the thirty that they did the last two times. Ooh. Uh, and then next week the game actually comes out. Right. Well, I suppose. Congratulations, question mark. Thank you. I'm looking forward right. to, to playing it and then getting too scared to finish it. <laughs> <laughs>